Good afternoon, good morning, you lovely lot. Welcome to a one hour masterclass all about decoupage. Now what I want to let you know at the moment, if you've not seen Play Your Crafts right earlier on, we are in the midst of our 12 days of Christmas. So today, up till midnight your time, you are going to get an additional 10% off when you spend £40, $40 or €40. Euros. What I do need you to do is when you get to the checkout in the promo code in capital letters, all together, I need you to type in CMAS10. So CMAS10, then that will take off that additional 10%. So just think of it, if you are platinum, you're going to get your 20% off, then you're going to get that additional 10 as well. As long as your basket is 40 or over and it ends midnight your time. So that is today's 12 days of Craftmas. Now, as I say, it is masterclass. It's all about decoupage. As you can see, I'm on this side doing the comments. We've got Grace on the show for the rest of the day when it comes to the comments. But this show will be shown all with decoupage when it comes to Debbie. Yes, absolutely. Debbie does decoupage. How That's about good. that? Love hey. that. Um, yes, we're going to be learning lots of different things. If you've got any questions, let us know. We're going to be covering the basics and how you do your decoupage and just exactly what decoupage is. Absolutely. Thank you as well, Grace, for letting me know that it's Craftmas. I cannot, Debbie, I cannot get my tongue around oh, Craftmas. Lily was the same yesterday morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I keep I keep saying, you know, 12 days of Christmas. Yes. And then when I do say Craftmas, I have to say it slowly because <laughs> it won't be Craftmas that comes out. We can kind of gather what would come out. So, yeah, <laughs> lots and lots and lots of you tuning in already today. It's so, so lovely to see so many names popping up. Uh, we've got Laura saying morning from from Virginia. We've got Aileen saying good morning everyone from Puerto Rico. CJ Papercrafts is saying good morning afternoon from Cool, Colorado. We've got Stamp Shopper, we've got Silver, we've got Charlotte saying afternoon, we've got Joe saying good morning. Um, we have got Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin was on the comments earlier. Grace is just saying it was only the first time lol, second time you said it like Craftmas. So that was good, we're all good. Miriam's in, Tess is in and Lumen is in. Decoupage. This is our decoupage topper. Now this one here is all of the pads with all of the decoupage that we can see here from Wisteria. Fab, lots of things you can do. Debbie will show us what sort of things we can do with these. Absolutely, these are beautiful decoupage pads and what they are, they're pop-out die-cut pads and I love the fact that you haven't got to do anything else with them other than open your pad. So if you open them up, what you'll see inside is an array of different images which all have these numbers. Now it's just a case of working out which numbers go to where. Basically, your black one and two here go together and your black one and two here go together, your one and two here in a sort of slightly different purple, and then you've got your one, two, and your three. Now, when you're working these out, you just have to remember that you pull your sheet out of here, you can see straight away, just be very careful taking them out so you don't rip any of your decoupage, and you'll see that just by giving these a wiggle, just out of the actual pad, you can then have the two, let's do these. You get about, I would say three to four different ones if you want to sort of layer them differently, but stick into the same one so you can see straight away, this piece here is gonna layer completely over the top. Now, if you just take your 3D glue gel, so I'm doing this very quickly so you can see, we're just gonna put a line down the center and literally pop that on top. Now using your glue gel means you have that little bit of wiggle room and then you create these amazing effects. Now if you were to cut all of or push all the, of these ones out, you can then pop these ones on top. And if I just bring all my other ones in that I've already done, you can see this is what you're getting out of this one sheet, which is quite incredible. So once you've got to that stage, you then want to start making up a card. So just bringing in a card blank in here. I've also got some toppers from our Wisteria collection, which is what this decoupage pad comes out of. So let's pop them to the side. We can then put all this into place. I've created an easel card, so it's already got my base to create that easel card there. 
pop these on top and I'm still going to use all of our glue gel just to go around the sides here and so we can mount this on top of our card. Before I do that, I want to just place this piece onto here. And again, making it quick using that glue gel. I'm gonna pop that into the middle. It means when I then place this over the top, I can see exactly where that goes and I can maneuver this bit in. So just pushing that one down and just pushing this one into place and then all you need to do is take your wisteria we're going to then layer this up just placing it wherever you really feel like it's going to go wherever um, that composition is needed let's pop that underneath just in there like so and then we're just going to do a couple more bits you can put as much or as little as you want on here so let's pop some on there just straighten that all up but look how beautiful that is now starting to look let's lay that some on there and then all we're going to do is just to finish i've got if i turn that round i'm going to just put a little bow onto the base and that will finish that beautiful decoupage card in no time whatsoever. So for following as to what Debbie was showing you there, you can then make a full card. When it comes to the project you want to do, you can add additional bits, but keeping it very simple if you want. Bring in maybe other elements that you've got, make a really, really big feature all follow in the same way Debbie showed you a moment ago, but they all come like that with 36 sheets. You can start to build them all together, number on top of number on top of number. That is your decoupage topper pad from the Wisteria that enable you to do lots of different things. Love decoupage. Love decoupage, Debbie. I just love the effect that you get with it, the layering that you get with it, mm -hmm. and the different things you can do with oh, it as well. so many different things, yeah. I absolutely love it too. It's fab. Keeping it simple or, of course, uh, going to town. Uh, right, Theo, let's have a look. Just to say as well, so anything that you actually see Debbie using throughout Masterclass and throughout the whole day, it's still there on our website, crafterscompanion.co.uk.com uh, .eu, and it's still there under Shop the Show as well. Actually, Shop the Day is also there so just have a wee look and see what you've got right we've also got Miriam Robinson saying good morning all from South Carolina Tess is saying good morning from snowy Wisconsin Lumen Genie is saying good morning everyone from a snow in Manchester I think it's heading this way I think it is snowing in Manchester Pauline uh, Hassal is saying hi everyone from Cheshire we've also got Lynn is saying afternoon from a chilly Isle of Wight Definitely chilly everywhere, that's for sure. We've got Charlotte Clark saying good morning, everyone from Georgia. We've got Elizabeth saying good morning from Virginia. And we've got uh, Kirsty D saying good afternoon, everyone. Decoupage toppers. This one, spring is here. Beautiful flowers. You can see with your topper pad, you've got a stamp. When it comes to this one here, combining them together but as I say this is spring is in here and it's all about decoupage. Debbie what can we do? This decoupage pad comes with a die so it makes it really usable and just a really fun way to do your decoupage. So if we look down on here we get that beautiful pad uh, and we can see inside we've just got pages and pages of that decoupage. Take one of those pages out and then what you will see is you have a die set to go with it. So they come in different forms. We've just shown you the ones that come with the pop outs that are already die cut. These ones uh, have got actual dies with them on the inside you have a little sort of nodular there which goes over your number so I know my number one will go on over there uh, nicely and it won't move I'm going to pop that down with some low tack tape making sure that I've got everything covered and that little piece is covering my number uh, and then I'm just going to go around I can sort of see where they are again this little nodular going over so we can actually pop that into place and I'm going to also take that down just like so and then we're going to do the same with our other flowers there so it's just a case of going all the way around taking those pieces and placing that little nodular over 
the number. So once you've done that, you're then ready to put them through your Gemini machine. So just taping them together. I always use low tech tape. It just means it secures them and they're not gonna go anywhere while you're placing them into your machine. So last one, pop that down. And then all I'm gonna do is grab my Gemini plates and we're just gonna cut them as we would just any thin metal die. So placing that onto our platform and then offer that into the mouth of your machine. Let that go through. That's then gonna cut those, no problem whatsoever. Uh, and straight away, you're gonna get that precision in your die cut in and you're gonna get those incredibly pretty images. So let's just take that one out. Take them off. And then when we take away our dies, we've got the perfect die cut. Now these ones that I'm using here, which is our uh, spring is here, uh, they've actually got no outside edge, no white edge. So it means when you layer these up, they're gonna layer up absolutely perfect. Now what you're gonna do with these, once you've got them all out, you're going to use your foam pads. This time we're bringing in foam pads. Now these are the quickest and easiest way to just layer up your designs because all you have to do is take those foam pads, place them from your sheet onto your actual designs. You can put as many or as little as you want. So if you want to have them where everything's quite flat and you want to just have that decoupage, you can then take these away. So we're just going to take our tabs off, just our covers from there to make them sticky or the sticky, make the sticky come through. We're going to then place that one over and put that straight onto our design. So it's just watching where that design is, covering that top piece, and that gives us that 3D where it's actually coming across there. And all you're gonna do is continue with your foam pads and each piece. Once you've then done that, if I bring this one here, look at the dimension that we have in that decoupage. And all I'm going to do is I've bought myself in a little card that I've just decorated with some pretty papers. We're going to take away our backing so do the same with taking that backing off I'm using my pokey tool it just makes it a little bit quicker and then we're going to place this right into the center of that card I've then just got myself um, uh, thank you for being a true friend which is one of our stamp sets and I'm then also just to make this a little bit more 3d we're going to place that on the top just there and then as I always like to do, we're just going to finish with a little bow on the side. And there we go. There's our decoupage uh, using our foam tape, our foam pads. Keep it very simple, straightforward, like you can see here if you so wish. Not a lot to it, building the layers. But if you love to go more with your concept cards, if you love to take them to the next level, you can still start to use them and incorporate them in many, many different ways. But that is your spring is here. That is your die and a pad. They die cut beautifully. All of that together, spring is here. With these ones, Debbie, I always find as well because it's that nice combination where you've got the decoupage, but the die does it. But then I do like to, every now and again, I'll go in and add little snippy bits. I'll take little bits out. I'll add different layers that maybe weren't there initially. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's just a clever way, isn't it, of actually uh, just creating that dimension into our cards. And I really love that when you can uh, create, ex cre create extra dimension. What I would say, though, Craig, is only give them to the special people that you're hand-giving oh, them to. If you're posting them, then obviously it's going to cost you a little bit more to post. So obviously decoupage is not for those posted letters out or posted cards out. But actually, if you're making a really special card that you're hand-delivering, uh, you can't do better than decoupage because it adds that real dramatic dimension doesn't it to your makes yeah that's it that really is it and then don't forget as well when it comes to anything like that where you've got the pad 
You don't have to use the dies. The dies there are a bit of a time saver. If you do love to do fussy cut, and then of course you can do it yourself. You know, you've got the best of both worlds. You've got the dies, but you've got the pads, or you might just want to do a little bit of both. Some die cutting, some fussy cutting, mix them together. And then of course you can start to add sparkles and inks and all these different things to your cards and your projects when it comes to your die cuts. Remember everything that you will see Debbie using throughout the days is across on our website. If you have a look, at Shop the Day. You'll find it all there as well as some card stocks, some bits and pieces as well. What I would say as well, just uh, where possible at the weekend, have a look as early as you can because it'll be surprising maybe to you how many uh, sellouts that we can uh, sometimes get. A lot of things have already gone. So if you are watching this back and you go, I love what Debbie's just done there, what I would say if it is out of stock currently on our website, you'll find that there's like an item number of that. Just take note of it or take note of the name so when you go back on our website you can always just search for it. I know as well there is a um, there's an option where you can pop your email address and then you get notified when it's back in stock. So these sort of things there is ways around it. But take what Debbie shows you and then start to use them with other areas of die cuts or uh, toppers or anything like that. So there is many many different ways in which you can use them. But let's have another look see what else everyone is saying. We have got, so Miriam is saying, gorgeous Debbie. And we're looking, look, we've both got our uh, buddy tops on today, haven't we? We have, yeah. yes. We're the Elf fan club, I think, aren't we? We, we are, <laughs> we absolutely are. We are champion the buddy. elves this weekend. <laughs> yes, we like smiling, you know, and we love... Hugs. Hugs. Santa. Santa. I know him. I know him too, <laughs> yeah. Somebody need a hug. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I do like Christmas trees as well, but I've never tried running and jumping to get the star oh, on the top. Oh, yeah, that's funny. That's brilliant. <laughs> and when he burps with a Coca-Cola. <laughs> uh, that's good. You're just waiting for him to finish. And then he just comes out, did you hear that? <laughs> Love it. Actually, I can imagine you being like him, you know, when he decorates the toy shop and makes it all this fabulous, that like would Christmas be me. scene. That would be you. That would definitely yeah. be me, mm. for sure, yeah. We need, to, uh, we need to film maybe next year now go into store get a few of us yes or just something backstage and just start de yeah. i know we could we could do a, a little uh, skit at the evisham store or chesterfield mm, store absolutely yes that would be good yes yeah. mm. just go and dress it overnight me and my buddy outfit yes. you can be there as well we could try and do it so none of the store staff know and yeah they'll just walk in and be like oh mm -hmm. santa's been <laughs> and it's actually been us. There we go. There's one to think about, isn't it? You can think about that one for next year. We have got Sarah Brown is saying hi again, everyone from Melbourne, Australia. What we've got as well, we've got a couple of uh, questions. So what we'll do is we'll uh, have a look, we'll read them and have an answer to them just shortly within this show here. But we do have another one that we want to have a look at. This one, this is still following on when it comes to your decoupage. But what I want you to do on this one, have a look at the bottom. This is decoupage with stamps. So you can create your own decoupage. This one, it's called Roses in Bloom. And you're gonna see with Debbie how you can start to use these with the Roses in Bloom decoupage stamps. Debbie. I love this one because stamps are going to last you forever and ever and ever if you look after them. When you stamp this one, I'm going to be using my Vaness uh, alcohol proof ink pad. I use this one because I am going to be bringing in my tri-blend brush pens, uh, which we're going to use to colour this in with. So the first thing we want to do, I've just got my rocker blocks because this is the easiest one that I can, easiest platform that we have to stamp onto because I actually want to do multiple stamping so all I'm going to do is I've got a piece of my Nina cardstock I'm then just going to stamp on a corner here I'm just making really good use of my uh, space and then we're going to go in again and then we're going to stamp another one so you can stamp as many as you want so depending on how many die cuts that you want to cut out so I'm just going to go in and we're going to just rock from heel to toe and do our second one and then let's do one more because we've got that space and we're just going to come in and we're going to stamp into that space as well. So I'm just making good use of my um, Nina cardstock. 
So once you've done all your stamping, we can put all our elements to the side. And then I'm going to bring in this. So this is our die set. There is a paper pad that goes with it as well. But actually, this is a great one just for cutting out a topper. So you can place this over. So I'm just making sure you don't get a number on this one. So all I'm going to do is look for this little sort of flower bud here and I can see it on here so I know that will then go over so find a point on that die that you know you can place over the top so before we do our die cutting I'm just going to bring in my pens because I want to give you a little tip so decide what you want to cut um, what you want to die cut I know that I want to use this one again find that flower pop that over there my next one I know I want to use uh, let's use the double one so I'm going to go to my double one so this one, all I need to colour in is this piece here because I'm just going to cut out those two. So plan ahead and then your third one and we can then place that over, just make sure I've got that the right way. Just place that over your flower like so, okay? So that's all you need to reference to cut out. So what you could do, you could actually draw around here and then you know that you've only got a colour in this piece. Now, because this piece here, let me just draw around that again so we can see that piece as well. This one is going to go over the top of this one. So actually, what I don't want to do, I don't want to waste my pen on this one. So all I'm going to do is bring in, I'm just going to start off with my mid colour and we're just going to colour around the edges here. So I'm just doing this very quickly to show you. So you just colour around those edges and then I can still come in and add that shading. So by going round here, all the way around. Because when this one is cut out, this is the only one that needs colouring in fully because you're going to place it over the top. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So this one here, can you see, I've coloured it in. I've not coloured my inside because if I colour the inside, I'm just going to now come in and cover it up. So I've coloured this one more because I'm bringing this one in and then I've got another two that I've coloured but this time I've just left this piece blank so when that goes over the top and then my last one will go over the top just like so. So nice and easy but don't waste your ink uh, colouring where you don't need it to colour. Just fo follow those sort of guidelines and then you can put it all into place. So I'm going to use my 3D all-purpose glue and what I would suggest is giving this a little bit of a curve with your pokey tool. And it is just a case of going round, just gently pulling and stretching those fibres of the card so it just gives it a little bit more dimension. So let's just move all this around. And then we've got our last one here. And all we're going to do with this, we're going to layer this on top of each other. So start off with your largest one. So that would be our one with our three buds. And I'm going to pop that over there. Now, can you see why I've coloured the edges? Because you will be able to see the edges underneath. But just make sure, push it down so if anyone looks through, they can't sort of see that hidden, hidden non-colouring. So let's pop that into place like so. And then our last one, we're just going to find that place where that goes down and pop that into place. So no one would know. And if I pick that up, you can't see anywhere around that where we haven't coloured. So I can show you that one. And all I'm going to do is bring in my finished card on this one, pop that, leave it the main focal point of your card, use some pretty papers in the background, add that ribbon, and you've got the most amazing card. And no one would ever know that your inside there is not coloured in. It looks amazing. It looks so, so good. And then what you can also do, as Debbie said, these are a set. So you can decorate it one way with the papers. But what you could do when it comes to the middle is just use the stamps alone as a little bit of a backdrop that you can see here. So all of that has come from the Roses in Bloom. Debbie says it is a set. However, we were just looking down at the bottom here when it comes to the set of roses, layering them up, create your decoupage, colour them in the, whichever way you like, but that is roses in bloom. Never ever did I ever think of that, Debbie, something so simple, but never thought about just going round the outside edge mm -hmm. and not necessarily going in the middle. Yeah. Or using the die to 
draw around quickly just so you've got an idea of where to colour, where yep. not to colour. Absolutely. Bits, eh? Yeah, and that's what masterclass is all about, isn't it? It's giving you our tips and, and techniques and uh, hints uh, that we could uh, maybe just um, uh, just do all those differences with. And it does save our ink because at the end of the day, uh, I don't know about you, Craig. On the tri blends, I'm I've only just started running out of a couple of colours, so it just shows how much we all colour, uh, and they just go on for such a long time. But I am now starting to to run out of that ink. Now, if I'd done that with my decoupage when these all come out and coloured everything in, mm -hmm. uh, my ink would have run out a lot quicker. So it's always good to be a bit savvy with your ink and only apply it, it where it's needed. Well, that's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And yeah, a lot of people already can see as well saying exactly the same. Um, we have, we've actually got a question, Debbie. Now, it's, it's more to do with stamping and Centura Peril. So I'll ask it just now anyway. Yep. It's Tanya saying, please, could somebody advise me on what type of ink pad is recommended for stamping sentiments onto Centura Peril. Okay, uh, so um, I would say there's uh, inks like stays on on the market. So you need an ink that's not gonna that's gonna dry quite quickly. Our um, quick drying ink pads will work on there, but they do take a little bit longer to dry. They're not as quick drying on a slippery surface. What I would also recommend is using our pigment ink pads um, and heat embossing, and that way you don't have to worry they dry straight away. But you do want sort of a, a stays on sort of ink pad to use on that. So Perfect. Um, yes. That's great. Um, Miriam is also saying, uh, really nice top, Debbie. Oh, Loving thank you. Well. like my buddy top. <laughs> I was watching yesterday and you had a really nice one on yesterday as well. Eh? Yes, Christmas jumper, yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure I was allowed to wear my buddy, so I had to ask if I was allowed to wear my buddy jumper today, but they yeah. said it was okay. Perfect, excellent, that's great. Yeah, um, it did, it looked really, really looked uh, really, really smart. So uh, I thought I must remember and tell Debbie about that. Again, any other questions that you've got, if there's anything specifically that you want to ask Debbie while she's going over decoupage or anything like that, then uh, feel free, just uh, send it across to Grace. As it's Grace, it's on the rest of the day, and uh, we'll fire them across to Debbie as well throughout this masterclass. So we are all good at the moment, which sounds good, so we can then move on. We have got our opulent dragonflies. A floral apertures, beautiful, variety of different ways which you can use them. One of many ways you'll see shortly, but Debbie is a way to show us what we can do with these opulent dragonflies. Having decoupage means it comes in so many different forms. Uh, and I love that you can decoupage your dies up as well. So it's not always um, about having those die cuts from a pad. You can actually create your own decoupage. Now, these dies are amazing because they're in two parts. So basically, if you pop this die together like so, it will cut out that beautiful frame. If I just wanted to cut this side out, I could cut that out. And then, because it's butterfly, and it doesn't matter which way round they fly, I can turn that over and die cut it the other way, which gives me a full butterfly frame. The same as if I just want a normal frame, so this just really intricate frame, cut on one side and then cut on the other side. But there's nothing to decoupage up on this one, so I want to use both of them together. So if you literally put them on your piece of card, tape them down, so use some low tap tape, take them down, run them through your machine, you will get this design, which is very pretty. Now you can see straight away, I've got these gorgeous dragonflies on here. So let's move the piece of card to the side, but actually I want to keep this piece as well. In here, you also get your embellishment die, so you get another dragonfly. Uh, so we're gonna cut that out, and I'm gonna cut it out with some silver card. And also, I want to cut this large butterfly out, or dragonfly out want to cut this dragonfly out. Uh, this one can be cut out as well. So if we just pop that onto there, we can then bring our cardstock in and run that through. Now, because I'm using glitter cardstock, I'm gonna place this right to the top of my uh, Gemini plates because I can run this through. And because we have the Gemini, we have the power of the reverse function. 
and we can pop that through so just right at the top I haven't taped it down but you can tape your ones down uh, now I'm running this through as soon as I know that's been done which I can hear that little little knock I can then pause in the middle and then my reverse function brings those plates back out now it's not necessary to do that but actually with glitter cardstock we're talking about a coated cardstock uh, and that means that it will cut through beautifully now can you see it's cut through those but I just want the actual butterfly design. So I'm just literally pulling that out. Look how easy it was to take that butterfly out of there. Keep calling it a butterfly, it's a dragonfly. So taking that dragonfly out of there. And then we can also take this small one. And then all you're going to do is take your, I mean, you can use scissors. I'm just doing this for quickness. If you use a pokey tool, you can just poke all those little pieces out, which will come out no problem whatsoever. Same with your bigger ones. So again, just poking all of those through. Then I would say cut multiples of these in different designs. So, and I'm in different cardstock. So if I bring these in, I've got my glitter ones, I've got my pink centura pearl, and I've got some white ones as well. So lots of different designs here that we've got to be able to decoupage these up. So we're gonna go back to that frame that we cut out. We're gonna place some. Now I've just used one of my oval dies and cut through here. This creates just a frame that I can then place this one on onto so it just gives a really pretty look so this is where we want to start decoupaging and all you need to do is I am gonna I'm not gonna be able to make the full card so I will show you it but I'm using a piece of um, acetate we do construction weight acetate so uh, that will be on the crafters companion website we're going to just lift our wings up so we know the ones that are coming up. All of these wings are up. So all I want to do is glue the main body. So to do this, what I would do is grab a little bottle. This is our um, precision nozzle. And it means that I can just apply my glue around the body and where I need it and it won't go anywhere else. And then you can just start to layer these up. So I want to use a pink one. Now you can slightly offset it if you want to. If you do that, it really does create that sort of decoupage feel because you're offsetting it and still using that white sort of rim there. And all you're gonna do is hold that into place for a few seconds just to let the glue take hold. I'm using tacky glue in my little bottle. And then we're gonna put the silver one on top of that. So again, using the glue just to go around onto those edges and then we can just place that on the top as well and that is a completely different form of decoupage but it is still decoupage because we're having those layers we're getting that dimension at the side which is incredible and then if I bring in my finished card on here you can see all these layers underneath to create that beautiful decoupage and then we've just made that gorgeous framed shaker card you can then use it that what? Then what you can also do is take the dragonflies, use the two dies together, use a shaker. But then what you can then do is use that one die twice, flip it on itself, create a different look by layering on top of each other. But those have been made from the opulent dragonflies. You've got multitude of uses when it comes to these ones here, but that is your opulent dragonflies. Uh, these, when these ones first came out, Debbie, I was like, so simply by turning the die round or flipping it around, you can have one look, but then remove the die, take a different one, have another look, but then you can use that one dragonfly, flip it around again and use it that way. Yeah. And then I was like, I, I sat down, I remember sitting down one afternoon and I think I got to about count five or six, yeah. maybe even seven different ways in which you could use that Absolutely. one set. Absolutely. They're very clever, aren't they? They really are. Yeah, really clever. And I love that we don't always think about decoupage in a die form like that. No. We think about it as a pad and cutting them out and having those toppers. Uh, but actually decoupage really is about that layering of, um, of of papers which is amazing and it's, it's super beautiful dye that one and I'll live on air and I'll be perfectly honest with you when I went over my information sheet last night Debbie and I looked at this show and I knew beforehand it was decoupage I first thought why do we have three decoupage and then your apertures at the end not thinking 
that layering right, your yes. butterflies yeah. or dragonflies on top is still a form of decoupage. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So don't just, as Debbie just showed you there, just don't think it's layer upon layer upon layer. You know, you can then be snipping, cutting, start to fold them over the top. So you know what Debbie's like, if Debbie doesn't mind me saying, I think that, is that going on 10 years you've been with? So I thought, um, I got it totally wrong, Craig, because I thought I was coming up to my 10th year in April and then something was posted and I realised I'd missed my 10th oh, anniversary. No. Yeah, so I've been here 10 years, April gone. Yeah, and uh, so it'd be six years next year on TV. Right. Um, but I've been with Crafters Companion sort of after that, under the umbrella of Crafters Companion for 10 years now. And let's just say you initially didn't really want to do TV, Not did you? All. Not at all. Didn't want to do it at all, no. You didn't? No. And, and if I'm honest, it's still something that I, I love doing it. But if someone was to tell me, Debbie, we just want you behind the scenes doing that job, I would jump at that chance. Yeah. Uh, because I love doing that. Yeah. I mean, we both do. We love that table set up and being mm -hmm. involved with all the samples. And, and I love getting stuck into things. And the only reason I started TV, because Sarah was going on with maternity leave um, with her little, it wasn't Oliver, Oliver's just turned nine, but with little Charlie. Right. Um, and she'd gone on the maternity leave and she needed someone and they couldn't find anyone. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll try it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, that's and where it thank gosh we do oh, have you on the team. Thank you so because much. Because that's why so many take hints and tips. Uh, even Grace has just put there, oh, Debbie. So do you know what we're going to do? We're going to have a little bit of a break, but do you have any questions? Is there anything that you've just seen Debbie doing or is there anything that she's done that sparked a question, a thought that you've just had. Actually, a thought, a wonder. What to do is get your comments in. We've still got around about 20 minutes before the end of the show. So if there is anything specifically, get the questions in. We're going to use this time to answer them. We'll have a wee bit of a chat as well. We'll go over some comments when we come back. But even when it comes to things such as, for instance, tomorrow, me and Debbie are in tomorrow. I've got a starter skills. I've got a colour me happy. Could be craft fall. It could be cart load. It could be a clearance. You you will always, always, and I know I bang on about this all the time, but I think it's so important to point out that if you join Club Inspire, which is free, I have never... Uh, Debbie, have you ever, ever done a show where we have said it excludes your Club Inspire? No, I never really thought about that, of course. Yeah, never. No, so you get your Club Inspire and your discounts on top of that. There you mm. go. Yeah. yeah, we are very good, aren't we? We really are. Mm. So it could be something as low as a pound or a dollar, you'll still get your Club Inspire. Happy Christmas, Happy Christmas <laughs> indeed. Absolutely. <laughs> Happy Christmas to you. So if you're like, oh, Craig, I like the thought of that. Here's the boss, Sarah, to tell you all about our Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Here at Crafters TV, it couldn't be easier to get your hands on the latest crafty must-haves. Leave the hard work to us while you shop from the comfort of your own living room. Head to the Crafters Companion website to see our full crafty range, or hit the Shop the Day button to see all the new and exciting products featuring on Crafters TV. Once you've filled your cart, leave it to us to get your crafty goodies to you in super quick time so you can get on with being creative. Crafters Companion, making crafty shopping a breeze. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, your home for all things craft. 
So, join our family of craft experts with live tutorials and demonstrations every day. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products here on Crafters TV. Get creative and craft along with our amazing deals. Your next craft project is only a click away. Tune in live seven days a week or watch on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook or our YouTube channel. You can chat to us, craft along and meet new friends in our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. You all have time with each other! <laughs> You're not free to boot camp. Get off! <laughs> <laughs> There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. So, stop what you're doing and enjoy the fun here on Crafters TV. Yeah, we do have some fun here. We really, really do. Too much fun, some people would say. But you know what, that's what... Uh, being in... We well, are lucky when you think about it, when being in a, in a position, Debbie, a job, that we just get to have fun while we're working. Oh. And do you know what, Craig? I mean, you know as well. So it is it is hard work sometimes. Work long hours, mm -hmm. travel lots. But when you do have so much fun, it feels like you're travelling. Is, more, is harder than what the job yeah. is. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yes, yeah, stuck in traffic, sitting in traffic. Exactly, yeah, it's, exactly. Um, That's the hardest bit about the job. So, um, yeah, we're mm -hmm. very lucky. And we're also lucky because we do have a brilliant team. We, do. we all get along. I've, and I can honestly say this, I've worked in other places and not everyone gets along. And I think we have such a lovely family unit here that everyone loves each other. That's the thing. And, and I think it can tell because you, you, can. you can't pretend that for so long. Yeah, you, can, you can. just cannot, and I, I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah. and you know, we bounce off of each other, but then we all in different ways come in different directions. For instance, mm -hmm. for me, and I know I've said it quite a lot, but you know, you've always been like kind of my men, you're a mentor to many of us, like if not all nanny. of us. <laughs> but you know, we've done QVC Germany together, and yeah. you know, so where we're talking about doing pack shots and learning and that. You learnt from Sarah, yeah. and then I've learnt from yeah. you, and that's why we are similar Absolutely. personalities yes, and horror films so. and that, yeah. but the yeah. way we work. And I miss that, Craig, because we do. haven't... I miss going to Germany. We used to go to Germany, like, every month, we sometimes did. twice yeah. a month. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we used to have a great time. But that was very hard work. Very hard work, <laughs> yeah. There was... For, for me, there was some... Some trips, I would leave my house at five in the morning, because yeah. you flew from Birmingham. Yes. I flew from Newcastle, so I would get up at 5 a.m. and then we would get there, we would do the show, we would come back, and there were sometimes I was back for like 6, 7 a.m. Yep. the next morning. Absolutely, so there yeah. and back, mm -hmm. done the show, that was you that done your the, yep. the shows and I would help mm -hmm. you. And within 12, 13 hours, been to Germany and back. I know. Do you remember the time we got upgraded in our hotel? I did. And we only had about three hours there, <laughs> and they upgraded us into these amazing suites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And Needless to say, I we were going to get very little sleep anyway because yeah, I was messaging exactly, you because yeah. separate rooms. I was yeah. like, is, is, is this the case? Because <laughs> you went to the check-in uh, check first and yeah. uh, the reception and got upgraded, and I'm there thinking, am I am I, am I going to get upgraded as well? <laughs> and, like, and then yeah, it did. I was oh, like, it was sleeping. amazing. There was a full-blown settee in there with armchairs. There was a dining table. There was an office bit. It, yes, Johnny. Mm -hmm. It had like it had a like as you walked in, I thought I'd not even got into the hotel room. It was just this big room with like wardrobes, and then there was a, a loo off the side of it, and then you walked into this massive living yeah. room, and then you went round the corner into a massive bedroom, and then round again to the bathroom know, it was like it was crazy i've never seen anything like it i've never been so sport in my whole life and i remember raiding the fridge i think you did the did same well. raided the fridge because everything was free <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I sat there watching telly and eating all these chocolate and crisps and pop just because it was And I think for both of us, I think it was about four in the morning or three in the yeah. morning or something. And I think we got about three hours sleep yeah. there. Big, big coffee machines with all these different yeah. pods from all I over know. the world, like it you say, the fridge. The walk-in shower was bigger than my actual bathroom <laughs> at home. I had a shower, I had a bath. I very rarely have a bath unless I'm feeling under the weather. I had a bath. Oh, yeah. I, I was... just went around taking pictures. <laughs> 
I was as well, yeah. Yeah, I was putting on my social media next the next day, like, oh my gosh, can't believe this, can't believe this. Um, right, we actually, we have got a question just come through. So, and this is a really good one as well, going on what Debbie's been showing. Patricia is saying, Debbie, how do you stop glue from clogging in the small bottle? I store it in a glory upside down, but it doesn't seem to help. Oh, I'm really, I have to say, I'm quite shocked. So um, I'm going to give you a few tips because I threw our one out uh, last week when I come in because it was the same. It was all clogged up and I couldn't understand why. But what, what happened, so this is my a real tip. When you take your pin out, what you want to do is make sure that you, instead of taking it right out, and we've got my glasses on, uh, you want to, when it's, let me put it back in. <laughs> oh, no, it's not going. Oh, dearie me. Um, I will get there in a second. It's like it'll be challenging itself. There we go. What you want to do is just pump it a little bit because what happens, if there is a little bit of hard glue in there, it will come out with that. So can you see that on the end? Mm -hmm. Then what you want to do is wipe that glue off. Now, it's tacky glue, so it's got nothing harmful. No. But if you do have sensitive skin, just use a piece of tissue to take that the glue off. You want that to be clean because what will happen, that glue that's in there will dry off. On there right so I then pop it into there into whatever little holder your glory or your little egg cup take this piece away like that and <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh my god oh my god that's such a good tip <laughs> to my tip. <laughs> oh, I love that. So that is the biggest tip then. When you put that back in, it, you're not going to get any clogging. If you don't do that, you will get clogging. And make sure you always store it upside down. But when you take your pin out, always... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh dearie me. Oh god. Good old buddy. He was always going to give us a laugh, wasn't yeah. he? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to be able to stop looking at it for the rest of the day now. I just um, looked up and he was just looking like mouth oh. open, like, wow, what a great tip. Oh gosh, I know. <laughs> Um, Hopefully that helps. <laughs> definitely. You know what you can also do do as well is what I like to do as well, and just a little little container. I put a little bit of a uh, kitchen roll in, mm -hmm. and I spritz it with a bit of water. And then if I'm using it for periods of time, without the pin in it, I'll just turn it upside down, and then it just stays moist. It doesn't dry. Use it, and then when I am finished, I just put the pin in as well. Yeah. So yeah, mm. there there is. But yeah, exactly as as Debbie was doing there, that should hopefully help. One last question just come through for now is Charlotte Everett is saying, Debbie, can someone please explain to me the difference with mountain scoring and valley scoring? We are trying to do a card from Crafters Inspiration. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's bring in the scoreboard. I love this, that we can just wing things mm -hmm. straight away. Uh, let me grab a piece of black card, because I think you'll be able to see it better on a piece of black card. So bring that in. OK, so when you score your card when you score any line on a scoreboard it will score down into your card so let's say for instance i want to do myself a half fold score line so i'm going to fold that in like that now we always say to fold away from that score line so that's always a mountain fold that is your mountain fold coming upwards, okay? Now, if I wanted to do a step on that card, so I wanted to come in here, really, you're best to turn it the opposite way round. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to go down just before my three, okay? And then that way, when you then fold that back, you're then creating 
so I, sh I didn't explain that very well. So I've got my valley fold there, and then I'm folding this back up on itself, which is the valley. So a mountain comes up, a valley comes down. And then if I was to do it on the opposite side as well, let's do it on this side, just on before our free. And we do the same. So because I'm folding upwards here, that's my valley, because a valley goes down and a mountain goes up. So that would be how you do your fold lines. So let me just score those in, like so. So we've got three lines, valley, mountain, valley. So hopefully that makes sense. It's just about which way they, they sort of go down onto. Mm -hmm. If you were doing something like a rosette and you wanted to do your, so we do our half lines. If we literally went to, I've gone to my half, my one and a half, my two and a half, then turn that round and then went to my one, my two inch, that creates a mountain and valley fold. Sure, yeah. So then when we can, so we can fold away from that line and then fold in away from that line and fold in. So it really is all about your scoring and where you put it and how you then fold backwards and forwards. And then that will create that dimension with that mountain and valley fold, like so. Okay, but Perfect. that's all it means. A mountain and valley is a mountain. If you think of a mountain goes up the peak and a valley goes down, and that's the easiest way. Perfect, that's great. Thank you, Debbie, for that one. Uh, Eve is saying, oh, Debbie, I love your laugh. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and these are great takes on, on the designs that were just shown just previous. Miriam is saying, I enjoyed watching the replay of the two Debbies yesterday. Aww. So much fun. <laughs> A lot of people did. A lot of people did. Uh, Lillian saying, uh, Buddy looks mesmerised. Beth is saying, I need an egg cup. Colette is saying, that's a really good story. Me and you going to Germany together yeah. for QVC Germany. And then we've got Tess is saying, Crafters TV is better than going to a comedy show. Aww. Tess, Miriam, Colette, Mary, Olga and Beth are all in absolutely hysterics when it comes to <laughs> Buzzy, Buddy being mem mesmerised a little moment ago. <laughs> I think I might Some change fun. him later for no, the don't. craft along. <laughs> no, don't. No, don't. That'll be a fun craft along. Uh, we're going to have a little uh, quick recap when it comes to our uh, decoupage. So these were the ones that Debbie had to look at first and foremost that were from the Wisteria collection. So these are the ones that are die cut. So they're all ready die cut for you. You pop them out, layer them up together. Lots of different uses, lots of different ways, but whether it's glue gel, foam pads, etc, etc, as Debbie did go over earlier on. They're a handy, useful little die cut topper Ha to have in your stash, aren't they? Oh, really handy, yeah. Uh, and I just want to explain about how easy they are once you've worked them out, and only because I got a bit confused with how to okay. put these together. So I want to show you, to maximise the use of the actual page, I keep this in my book, because what it does, it just gives me a little guideline to remember. Right. Because, so earlier, it's exactly what I said, you've got number one, number two. Can you see, it's sort of like a lilac-y colour. It is. This one is is a deeper sort of uh, colour and you've got your number one, your number two and your number three. But it can get confusing where the configuration is. So this one's easy. So you've got your number one and your number two. This number two layers over your number one. So nice and easy. So I've drawn myself a little line going across. On this one, you start with your number one. So this is your biggest piece. You then go to your number two. Now I've drawn a line here because your number three is this one in the corner. Okay. Because it looks like one two three but it's not this one is number one this one is number two because it's the two black ones right Can you see yeah so and then the bottom one you've got the two black ones so these are your two black ones so really it's just remembering that this piece here is your third piece and that one then goes over the top of your number two got so it. draw yourself a little so I just put this in so I know when I go to pull them out so I know straight away let's pull that number one out so you're just going to give that a little wiggle and be very gentle with them because these are very delicate and they will come out lovely. So you can see that's our number one. Then I'm going to go to my number two. And all I'm doing is giving a little wiggle and holding that in the, uh, just holding the paper in the background. That's our number two. So you can see placed on there becomes our number two. And then we're going to go across to this one now. And this is our number three. 
but because it's not next to, there's two others between those two, okay. which makes it sometimes a little bit comp confusing. But you'll soon, once you take all these out, you'll realise how they all go together beautifully. And that's how they go together like that. So the card we did earlier, you can then decoupage all those pieces up to create those amazing pieces. So you're actually getting your, your let's turn it the right way. You're getting, uh, no, what's the right way? <laughs> you're getting one, two, you're getting getting three you're getting four different sprigs out of that yeah. one sheet Craig which is absolutely amazing that is, and that's it? the sort of thing you can do with them but that's a good guide just draw yourself a little guide it's still usable that one at the end uh, but then you can you'll know exactly how to take them out of the pad yeah you can you're getting all them plus you know within that pad it's 36 sheets so you know me I'm not good with maths but then you've got 36 times four and then as we were talking about earlier you can still add more layers to them do only little bits of chip, uh, chipping away when it comes to it with your scissors. You can absolutely do that. But let's have another couple of looks that we were showing you earlier on because here, gone in with our pattern paper. Now these were all created using the Wisteria collection. So if you're looking at any of the additional products on this card, that's where it's from. But making a focal point with that die cut decoupage Wisteria, you can see here, but then you can scale it down if you want to. Or if you've got other dies within your collection, for instance, all of this, once again, is from the Wisteria collection, but you might have other dies, other window dies. They're going to work. They're going to complement. You might have additional papers as well at home, but they're just a really good staple for a focal or maybe a little bit of a surround. Build them up, you know, with the, the four layers that come with each of them, or, you know, if you want to add more or reduce more, like Debbie was saying earlier on. And then they're also beautiful as well, Debbie, even if you go in with some uh, glitters mm -hmm. or your sparkle pens or yes. anything like mm, that, absolutely. just to add to them. Oh, they just look amazing. And actually with the Wisteria, we had that petal powder as well. Yeah. So make sure you add that to them because it just elevates them to a whole new level and even that creates decoupage because it's extra layers that you're putting on it which is amazing perfect that's great thanks for that debbie uh, what i have been saying throughout of course the weekend show because we've got a slightly new lineup now you can still when it comes to anything that debbie's showing whether it's this master class tomorrow i've got starter skills that's going to be with our embossing boards and then i've got color me happy with some water-based mediums. All the products you see me use, Debbie use, any of us use, they're still there on the website. If at the time you're watching this back at a later date and they're out of stock, just keep a note of the number or just pop your email address for you to be notified when they're back in stock. But they're all there on the website. It's worthwhile joining our Club Inspire because it is free. We went over the benefits earlier on, I'll show you again later on. But as it stands today, so uh, today on, what's this, Saturday the 12th, up till Saturday the 10th and I'll tell I'll tell you I'll tell you later on why I've been thinking about the 12th because it's to do with our advent calendar Saturday the 10th uh, up till midnight your time you're going to get an additional 10% off if you spend 40 pound 40 dollars or 40 euros so it's worthwhile having a look maybe some of the bits that Debbie's been showing you today but that's us for Masterclass. We are going to be back later on today, 6 o'clock here in the UK, 1pm Eastern Time, 10am Pacific Time. It is, of course, going to be a craft along. And Debbie, what are we going to be looking at? Oh, yes, let's bring it in. We're going to be making this beautiful pop-up hexagon card. Uh, and it is super it's simple to do. <laughs> it's buddy again. It's like, oh, my God, I want to make that. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do a craft alone like that. I'll, I'll change, Johnny, don't worry. <laughs> I'm all right, but don't look at the screen. In the screen, yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Somebody want a hug. <laughs> but yes, come back at the six o'clock. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got Sean crafting along with us. And it's going to be amazing. And you might just learn a simple uh, new card technique today. Definitely. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Debbie. So if you are watching live, we'll see you in about three hours time. Until then, go and grab your lunch, your tea, your breakfast, whatever it is. And we'll see you back for craft along later on. Bye.